Eight years ago, a new hockey team was born, the New York Islanders. They started out as an expansion team in the National Hockey League, a team of players who had never played as a team before. Instantly, they broke all sorts of records. The most games lost, the fewest games won. In the eight years, a man named Bill Toy restructured the team. He drafted for better players, like Dennis Potvin, Bobby Nystrom, Brian Trottier, and Mike Bossy, and brought in Al Arbor as coach. That's when everything started to click, and the Islanders started to win. They began beating teams like the Boston Bruins, the Philadelphia Flyers, and the Montreal Canadiens. It seemed the Islanders had learned a lot about something we at Chemical Bank call chemistry. But chemistry didn't just win games for the Islanders. It won them the most coveted award in professional hockey, the Stanley Cup. Chemical Bank congratulates the 1980 Stanley Cup winners, the New York Islanders. It seems the chemistry's just right. Henning comes back to his own blue line and shoots it up ice for Tonelli. Tonelli comes in over the blue line on the off wing. Comes in front of the shot, the nice and score! This is the story of a hockey team, a team which in just eight short years managed to reach out and grab what professional hockey teams have been battling for for the last 87 years, the Stanley Cup. The team, of course, is the New York Island. Everybody stuck to what they thought was their only goal, and the, their only goal was to win the Stanley Cup, and we did it. Winning the Stanley Cup. It's a culmination of all the work, of all the pains and all, all of the, the bad days and all of those uh, summers where you mourn for months, two months after the hockey season. And for all of us, it was a, it's the first time winning the Stanley Cup. It's also the first time in many of our lives that we finished a hockey season and not had to be upset by a loss or a defeat in a playoff situation. We, winning the Cup is the dream of every Canadian boy who's played. And now that there's Americans in the league, they have the same dream when they play hockey. It's, it's the greatest prize in the game and a game that we love and work and dedicate our lives to. Uh, there's no other way I can put it other than the fact that it's the, it's, it's the greatest prize to me in my lifetime. It really doesn't seem that long ago, October 7th, 1972, when the Islanders first stepped onto the ice at the Nassau Coliseum to compete in the National Hockey League. Life for an expansion team in any sport is rough in the beginning. And the Islanders were no exception, as they posted a record of 12 wins, 60 losses, and 8 ties. However, unlike many other expansion teams, the Islanders improved with each passing season. In their eight-year existence, the Islanders have had only one general manager, Bill Torrey, and he now recalls those early days. The day I was hired, which I guess was around February 10th or 11th, 1972, Mr. Bo said to me that uh, he realized that uh, we we're starting from scratch, but that uh, I wouldn't have to be concerned about, you know, interference or that uh, what I had given him as a rough outline as a way to proceed was what he was accepted, had accepted, and, uh, and that's what the partners uh, were agreeable to doing, and that was basically not look for a year or two but to look uh, three, five, maybe six years down the road and see what might be there. And so what I did was practically ignore totally uh, the expansion draft other than just, uh, you know, when it was fairly obvious. And I spent a lot of time uh, looking at the draft for the next two to three to four years, which would be obviously the nucleus from which this team would be built, and it has been built. One of the first players to don an Islander uniform, and for years he was known as Mr. Islander, was Ed Westfall. He came over from the Stanley Cup champion Boston Bruins in the 1972 expansion draft and immediately added that touch of class that every team needs when it starts out. 
my initial reaction to uh, you know to leaving the Boston Bruins, I think, is one that uh, is understandable. I was bitterly disappointed after winning the Stanley Cup for the second time in in three seasons. I had felt for the first time really in my career that I had some security. Uh, as it turned out, it was false. And upon talking with uh, the people uh, with the New York Islanders, Mr. Bill Torrey, uh, I had uh, been welcomed and thought that it was only fair to what I had put in for 11 years in Boston to try and, and uh, start a new career at something that I did know, and that was hockey, so I had accepted the offer from Mr. Torrey to come to the New York Islanders and, and see if somehow we couldn't gain some credibility to a brand new team starting out. Goaltender Billy Smith is the only remaining Islander from the 1972 expansion draft. He has known both the good and the bad times, as he now recalls. Well, first of all, I started out with the Los Angeles Kings, and then in 1972, I was left open on the draft, and the New York Islanders picked me up, which I thought at the time was a very big opportunity for me to play. The first two, three years with the New York Islanders, we didn't really have too much talent, and, and we suffered along through those years, even though I found it very exciting. But then fortunately, we got guys like uh, Dennis Potson and Brian Trotty and Mike Boss, and the team started picking up. In 1979, in the playoffs, we, we were beat out by the uh, New York Rangers, which was a very upsetting year for the New York Islanders, being beat up by the New York Rangers. Then we moved on to 1980, where we started out very badly we we didn't have much chance of doing anything until we made several good trades we got kenny morrow then we got gordy lane and then the biggest trade of all we got butchie going and we were very fortunate to move right along in the playoffs we had several great breaks and some great opportunities and we ended up winning the stanley cup which was probably the highlight of everybody's nhl career other members of that first Islander team who helped contribute to the winning of the Stanley Cup in 1980 were Lorne Henning, Gary Howitt, and Bob Nystrom. They were all Islander draft choices that first year. In their second season, the Islanders again came up winners at the amateur draft when they selected Dennis Potvin. Summer 1973, I was drafted by the Islanders, and at that time I was in, uh, I was really happy to have been drafted number one in the country, and that was a goal that I'd been going through, uh, that I had in my mind throughout of junior hockey. And coming with the Islander team, knowing that it had a poor record the season before, but also knowing that there was going to be a coaching change. And uh, my junior coach had told me that Al Arbor would take us under his wing and show us how to play hockey, and especially help me to play defense in the National Hockey League. And that's exactly what happened. And through those early years, we weren't a championship team or anything, but what happened is that the players grew, and the players grew in confidence and talent, and the team grew uh, together. And I think that that's the best ingredient that uh, ever came out of those first years, the patience and, uh, and the work put in uh, to this hockey club by the management, by uh, Al Arbor especially. On June 10, 1973, the New York Islanders hired Al Arbor as coach, and he has been at the helm ever since. In 12 seasons as an NHL player and 19 seasons in professional hockey, Arbor has been known as one of the more steady defensemen. In their first season, the Islanders allowed 347 goals. In Arbor's first season behind the Islander bench, that figure dropped dramatically to 247. Al Arbor recalls the transformation the Islanders have made from cellar dwellers to the occupants of the executive suite. Well, I recall when I first uh joined the club and at the first training camp uh, after looking at all the players that were there trying out I thought that it was going to be, be a, a long long time till we ever could get to the Stanley Cup uh, you know so we decided to go with kids and uh, but after a couple of months uh, some of the players that we had uh, certainly uh, showed a lot of encouragement for me players like Howard uh, Nystrom uh, Dave Lewis, Andre Saint Laurent, uh, these players were uh, just continually working in the afternoon and in the morning and uh, never giving up and uh, it, it really caught on with the club and uh, at that time I felt that uh, you know we could surprise a few people in, uh, in a short few years. In their third year the Islanders made a dramatic turnaround posting a record of 33 wins, 25 losses, 22 ties, and making the playoffs for the first time. 
The Islanders' first trip to the postseason play is an interesting page in their history. In the quarterfinal round, they found themselves down three games to none against Pittsburgh, but they roared back to win the next four games and the series. And all Islander fans will remember Chico Resch kissing the goalpost. It was only the second time in NHL history a team came from behind three games to none to win a playoff seven-game series. In the semifinal round, they found themselves in the same situation against Philadelphia this time. Again, they came back, winning three straight before losing the seventh game. The Islanders' captain of that team, Ed Westfall, recalls those two incredible series. 1975 was the really birth of recognition for the New York Islanders. Uh, uh, after scraping through the season, we had not made the playoffs until that year, and it was right down to the last of the regular season games when we made the playoffs. We played the New York Rangers, our crosstown rivals, as they are sometimes called, in the first round, a two out of three series. Lost the first game in uh, Madison Square Gardens, won back here in Long Island, and then won an uh, overtime game in Madison Square Garden to defeat and eliminate the New York Rangers, something that no one ever thought would happen. We were kind of a laughing stock when we went into that series. Going from there, we went into the series with Pittsburgh, we lost, unfortunately, the first three games and uh, faced elimination. But lo and behold, uh, uh, leave it to the Islanders of 1975. They came storming back and won four straight games, being only the second team in the NHL history ever to do that. And upon doing that, we had to then face the, the very talented and very powerful Philadelphia Flyers. And in this was in the semifinals. We uh, lost the first three games to Philadelphia, much like we did to Pittsburgh, and then came storming back to win three straight. And then in the seventh game in Philadelphia, they eliminated the uh, New York Islanders uh, in a game uh, that we all remember, the score being four to two. And that was the, uh, really the uh, coming to life of the uh, New York Islanders franchise. And they had then started on the road that, uh, of course, has taken them to the heights that they have gained today. In their fourth year, the Islanders became an offensive powerhouse when, for the first time, they exceeded 40 wins and 100 points. A new face in the lineup that season was Brian Trache, and he set an NHL record of 95 points by a rookie. In 1975, my rookie season with the Islanders, I was fortunate enough to get 32 goals, 63 assists, and set a record of 90, 95 points, and uh, it still holds as, as a, a record in the NHL. Trache would be joined two years later by another high-scoring rookie, Mike Bossy. In his first Trache season, Bossy would set an Bossy NHL record of 53 team. goals by a rookie. His second season was even more incredible as he scored 69 goals. Then this season, even though hampered by injuries, Bossy again exceeded the 50-goal plateau, scoring 51. Between Bossy and Trache, the Islanders had the most awesome scoring combination in the National Hockey League. Playing with Ryan is, is you know, it's, it's been a lot of fun for me. I, I didn't know who I was going to play with when I first came to the Islanders. I didn't know who Brian Trotsky was when I came here. I, I had heard about him, but I didn't know who Brian was the person and uh, who Brian was the hockey player. Um, it didn't take me long to find out that Brian was one heck of a hockey player, one heck of a centerman. And uh, it, it seemed that, that as soon as we started playing with, with each other, that things started working well for myself and for him. After my first year, I, I finished my rookie season with over 50 goals. And Brian, uh, you know, got over 100 and 20 points and I think that was a first for him too so you know it was a lot of fun for for both of us and uh, you know Brian's Brian's my best friend I have on a team so and I'm not I'm not shy to say it either we get along extremely well the 1978-79 season was truly a great one in the Islanders history as they led the National Hockey League in overall points however it all came undone in the playoffs when they were upset by the Rangers then came the 1979-80 season. The Islanders dipped to 91 points, fifth best in the league. A pretty good year ordinarily, but not when compared to the previous season. Upon closer examination, however, it becomes evident what happened. Injuries to key players. 
Dennis Potvan out for 49 games, Bob Nystrom out for 14 games, and on and on it went. But the 1979-80 season did have one incredible occurrence. It was the night of November 28th when Billy Smith made National Hockey League history. A delayed penalty coming up against the Islanders. The Brockies have control of the puck. DeLorme comes in over the blue line on the left side. He feeds the right point to Ramage. In front of Deblois, he shoots saved by Billy Smith. Rebound to his left. Taken by Ramage. He tries to feed the right point. There's nobody there that's going the full length of the rink. It's going to go in the net. It's a goal for the New York Islanders, and they've tied the score at 4 all. And Billy Smith should get credit for that goal. He was the last one to touch it. We'll check on the scoring later, but the Islanders have tied it up on an empty net goal scored by Rob Ramage of the Colorado Rockies that should be credited to Billy Smith to make National Hockey League history. Billy Smith was indeed credited with a goal and thus became the first goalie in NHL history to accomplish this feat. In 1980, I was very fortunate to be the first goalie ever to score a goal against the Colorado Rockies. At first, it was credited to Davy Lewis, but then after the game, when they saw it on the replay, Eddie Westfall was the man that ended up picking it up, and the goal was credited to me. It was very exciting. There was a lot of good publicity brought from it, and it was really a, a big highlight in my career in which both the stick and the puck are going to end up in the Hall of Fame, and my name will be in the record books forever. The first half of the season was nothing to write home about as the Islanders posted a rather blasé record of 17 wins, 17 losses, and six ties. But in the second half, the pieces that were to be a part of a Stanley Cup puzzle were being inserted. On February 28th, a young man fresh from the U.S. Olympic hockey team, Ken Morrow, joined the Islanders. Little did he know that three months later, he would live the second dream of a lifetime. In the 1979-80 season, it was felt that if you stopped the Brian Trache line, you stopped the New York Islanders. That theory was put to rest in March, when the Islanders acquired center Butch Goring from the Los Angeles Kings. Goring would anchor the Islanders' number two line, and from the day he joined the team until the end of the season, the Islanders would not lose another game, 12 straight. General Manager Bill Torrey comments on the acquisition of Goring. There's been so many things written and said about it, some of which, you know, carry it really out of its honest context. But I think any trade you make, has to, the timing of the trade is almost, almost as important, or can be almost as important as the, the actual trade itself. We were looking for a position and a certain type of player, and there uh, are not a lot around. Um, we had to pay a high price uh, to get the player, but it was a price that we could afford to pay, uh, thanks to the development of some other aspects of our team this year. Our assessment of Butch was that he had had seven or eight years of a lot of hard work and a lot of frustration, that he was a winning team type player, and that an opportunity to be on a Stanley Cup championship team would be something that he would work even harder for. He is. Uh, he just creates excitement, he generates enthusiasm, and uh, that's something that, that money can't buy. And certainly, I think the ingredient that he has brought um, is that hustling, all-out, hard-working effort. And uh, uh, the talent is obvious, the other aspects are not always, in, but the, they have proven to me to be more important than, than, than just the basic talent. The Islanders closed out the regular season on Saturday, April 5th with a two-to-one conquest of the New York Rangers. Now it's on to the playoffs for the sixth straight season. This time, there would be no heartbreaking defeats, no bitter upsets. This time, the chemistry is right. It belongs to the Islanders. The Islanders opened the playoffs on Tuesday, April 8th against the Los Angeles Kings. 
The Islanders definitely are a two-goalie team. Between Billy Smith and Chico Resch, they have as formidable goaltending as there is in the NHL. Coach Al Arbor felt that Billy Smith had the hot hand, so Smitty would start the first game against L.A. It turned out to be a wise decision, for Smith would be sensational throughout the 1980 playoffs. In game one of the series, the Islanders blew the Kings right out of the Nassau Coliseum with an 8-1 victory. But in game two, Los Angeles came back to even the series at a game apiece. So now it was on to Los Angeles for games three and four. In game three, the Islanders were behind three to one, battled back to tie it up and send it into overtime. Olympian Ken Morrow then provided the dramatics. We're tied at three all. This is sudden death overtime. Draw controlled by the Kings, but it went right on net. Lassard made the save behind the net for Lewis. He tries to clear, not out. Lane got a drive away from the left point, saved by Lassard. Rebound on the corner. Sam Laurent can't get it out. It's kept in by Howitt. Centering pass, top of the slot tomorrow. The drive. Go! Islanders yeah! win! All right! Win on the drive by Kenny Morrow. And the Islanders have won the overtime game 4-3. to three. The Los Angeles Kings were a high-scoring offensive machine, and the Islanders knew they would have to play a well-disciplined defensive game to beat them. In Game 4, they did just that, shutting out the Kings 6 to nothing to win the series three games to one. Well, the draw will be in the Islanders' zone. Four seconds to go in the third period. Islanders with a 6 to nothing lead. Carlson on the draw with Bourne. They tie each other up, poke towards the net, and Karam's wide. Dennis has the puck, and a buzzer sounds, and the game is over. The Islanders have eliminated the Los Angeles Kings three games to one on the shutout turned in by Billy Smith. And the last time he had a shutout was last year, I believe, in the playoffs against Chicago. But what a victory here tonight for the Islanders. The Islanders' next opponent in the quarterfinal round of the playoffs would be a different kind of challenge, a very physical team, the Boston Bruins. In the opener at the Boston Garden on April 16th, the two teams were even at one goal apiece at the end of regulation, then at 102 of the overtime. Here's Gillies coming in on the left wing, comes right in front, shot, scores! Yeah! All right, scores, and the Islanders win in overtime! And the bench clears to congratulate him, Clark Gillies scoring at a minute two seconds of overtime, and the Islanders win it two to one. In game two, it got even tougher, as evidenced by a bench-clearing brawl at the close of period number one. But then both teams settled down to play steady hockey. In regulation time, the score was tied at four all, when Terry O'Reilly, in the overtime, made a bad clearing pass onto the stick of Bob Bourne. Here's a three on two if they hurry. Bourne down the right side. That stops at the point. The drive, high and wide, and cheever has got a piece of it. The rebound comes to the right side of the net, and Park grabs it there. Comes up on the left wing for Wensick. He lets it go. Then he kept it in, deflected it right on goal to the left side of Cheevers and let it go wide of the net. O'Reilly tries to clear, but not out. Bourne, top of the slot, drive. Oh, oh, Bobby Bourne! Oh, oh, Raiders win! Oh, Raiders win! Once again, an interception inside the Boston Bruins blue line, Bobby Bourne, who had just directed a couple of shots for Jerry Cheevers, who had made the initial save, but this time he made no mistake. He used the Bruins defense as some kind of a screen, and Jerry Cheevers didn't really have much of a chance. He was beat on the high side, on the stick side. What a fantastic victory. I don't believe this, Bob. It's fantastic. I'm so happy for the guys. What an effort. Things looked good for the Islanders. Two victories on the Boston Garden ice. It appeared the Bruins were finished when the Islanders beat Boston in Game 3 by a score of 5-3 to three at the Nassau Coliseum. But the Bruins battled back to win Game 4 in overtime. So it was back to Boston for Game 5. The Bruins started the scoring early and led 2 to nothing in the first three and a half minutes of that hockey game. But the Islanders battled back on goals by Stefan Pearson. Dwayne Sutter, Clark Gillies, and Dennis Potvan to clinch the victory 4-2 to two, and the quarterfinal series over Boston. Ahead to Gorling. Gorling in over the blue line. Right side lead to Sutter. Comes in front. The shot. Score! Beautiful. Dwayne Sutter finally got a goal that he was looking for. Beautiful effort. This is so re reassuring for me. It makes me feel really good. We had talked about Dwayne Sutter a little earlier on, and he was wondering when he was going to get a goal, if ever, and he got a big one. Let me tell you, the score is 2-2. Gillies at the left point, backhands it in over the goal line, Sutter after it, with Cheevers behind the net, takes Sutter out of the play, and Bork clears but not out, Gillies top of the slot, the drive, score! Hey! Gillies puts the Islanders ahead, 3-2. to two. 5.40 to play in the third period. Islanders lead it by one. Here's a steal by Bourne. Marcotte got it back. Bossy has in the top of the spot to Dennis. 
Fake shoot, score! All right! And it's popped up, finally got it! And the Islanders lead it 4 to 2. 10 seconds to go in the third period. Park threw it in front again. Morrow knocked that down. Park has. Centering pass in front. The court can't get it. O'Reilly fires. Deflected in front, and Morrow cleared it out. All right! And that's it! All, All right! right. It's over. The Islanders have won it! All, All right! right. 4 to 2. What a fantastic way to win a series, Bob. We're down 2 to nothing in the first 4 or 5 minutes of this hockey game, and these guys don't know when to quit. They just kept coming and coming, and that's exactly what they did, and they came back. A tremendous comeback for the New York Islanders, who won this series four games to one. The Islanders were flying now, flying right into the swift-skating Buffalo Sabres. In the first game of this semifinal playoff, the Islanders kept astounding everyone with a 4-1 to victory as Billy Smith sparkled in goal. Ramsey has there, trying to come in front with a puck. He goes to the right side of the net, out to the left point to Schoenfeld. The drive, deflected just wide as Gare had a piece of it, but so did Billy Smith. And McKechnie holds onto the puck, centering pass. Here's the drive, saved by Smitty, off the fan box there. The Sabres dig it free, left point to Schoenfeld. And it's knocked off his stick by Bobby Bourne, going back the other way. Bourne comes in, one on nobody, comes in front, the shot, score! Beautiful! to the right face-off circle, then the right point. Ben Boxmere drive, saved by Smitty, and he held on. It got behind him, but he managed to hold on to it at the last second as the penalty is over, and both teams go back to full strength. Icing being waved off as Hype goes back to pick it up. Comes right in front of the net, clearing pass, stolen by Bossy in front, the shot, score! Mike Bossy with a great steal, and he drilled it, and the Islanders lead it 2-1. Face off in the Sabre zone at the top of the left face off circle is controlled by the Islanders. Right point drive by Pearson just went wide of the net. Rebound Tonelli in front shot. He scores! Right. John Tonelli got the rebound off the backboards and drilled it. The Islanders lead it 3 to 1. Loose puck in the Islanders zone. Mongrain behind the net for Perot. Knocked off his stick. He got it back to the left side of the net. Out to the left point to Schoenfeld. The drive saved by Smitty. Rebound on the slot taken by Merrick and he cleared the zone. Left wing lead to Rick Martin into the top of the slot. Comes in front. Fake shoot. Save Smitty. Now Van Box finds an opening up on the right wing for Perot. Perot comes to the Islander blue line at the right point. Now threw it along the boards for Sealing in the right corner. Out to the top of the slot. A shot by Sealing. Knocked down and a save by Smitty on a deflection by Martin. And the Islanders clear the zone. Tonelli crosses the red line. Sends in Sutter on the left wing. Down the left wing he goes to the goal line. In front of Tonelli. Shot. All right! John Tonelli on a great centering pass by Dwayne Sutter. And the Islanders lead it 4-1. to one. The second game of the series went to double overtime. Scoring is out for the draw against Samard outside the Islander blue line. Islanders control. Dennis has in his own zone. Comes right side to Larimer. Bokes it out the center ice to Nystrom. Nystrom down the right wing. Dumps it in over the goal line. Sove stops behind the net. Then uh, Van Boxmere tried to clear it away. Goring harassed him, so the Sabres have to get some help. Savard tried to clear, but not out. Kept in by Larmer. Now Savard clears it, but not out. Gillies with a drive. Just went wide. Rebound to the left corner. Sove clears it over there. Now it's taken by Rick Martin. Here's another steal. Gillies, top of the slot drive. Broken up by Van Boxmere. Rebound to, ba to Nystrom. Trying to center it. Out to the slot. And Larmer, the drive. Yes! Scores. Rebound yes! Nystrom. Score! And the Islanders win! Bobby Nystrom, after the Larmer drive that was saved by Solve. Nystrom jumped on the loose puck and knocked it home. And the Islanders win it in double overtime, 2-1. to one. The Islanders now led the series two games to none. They had played seven road games in the playoffs and won them all. However, on their home ice, they were just two and two. On the night of May 3rd, the Islanders straightened out that situation with a seven to four win and a rather commanding three games to none lead in the series. Farrow racing down into the Islanders on a long shot off. Morrow is sticking to the left corner, picked up by Martin. Martin passed to McClanahan, tipped away by Trottier. Trottier to the right wing for Bossy. Bossy scores into the Buffalo zone. He shoots it. Chase Tonelli got the draw tomorrow. Morrow shot it in high. Around it comes to the near boards. Lane there checked by Perot. Loose puck behind the net. Tonelli battles with Mike Ramsey.
24 seconds. However, this series wasn't over yet. The Sabres bounced back and won games four and five to narrow the Islanders' lead to three games to two. Was this the ghost of playoffs past making a revisit? No, it wasn't, but it looked that way as Gilles Perot scored a pair of goals early in the game and Buffalo led it two to nothing. But the Islanders came back to score five straight unanswered goals and eliminated Buffalo with a five to two thrashing. Checking, but Potvin pulls his way out. The pass for Goring who slaps it into the Buffalo zone. Van Boxmere back. Gillies for checking. Van Boxmere stopped by Sutter. Gillies with a puck. Gillies stick handling to Sutter. Sutter tried to jam it in. The shot. Score. No. In. Wayne Sutter. Wayne Sutter has scored. It's four to two. The light was slow to come on, but referee Van Halliman signaled it. Wayne Sutter has made it four to two. Rick Park brings it up. To Perro at his own blue line. Perro steal by Moore, and here it is. Score, Bobby Moore. And this game is all over now with a minute on the clock. It's finals time. All right. For the first time in Islander history, they were in the Stanley Cup Finals against the regular season champion Philadelphia Flyers. Up to this point in the playoffs, the Islanders had played every kind of hockey imaginable. Coach Al Arbor had said they had played Los Angeles, a team that was known for their scoring punch, and had won. They had played the Boston Bruins, known for their physical style, and the Islanders had won. Then they had met the Buffalo Sabres, a team that could skate with the best of them, and won again. The Islanders were tough. They could score, and they weren't too bad at the skating game either. But Philadelphia was coming off a sensational season. They were the overall point leader in the regular season. They had also posted an incredible 35-game undefeated streak. If the Islanders were to win the Cup, they would have to do it against the best. In the series opener, it was a seesaw game of hard skating, tough checking, and strong goaltending. Regulation play ended with a game tied at 3-all. Then, in overtime... Down to 25 seconds now on the Islander power play in sudden death overtime, tied at 3-all. Early in this sudden death overtime, Islanders have the puck. Time for another rush. Goring starts up ice, gives to Kenny Morrow. Left side lead to Dennis at the red line. Veers to his right, comes in over the blue line. At the right point, puts on the brakes. Now sets up, comes left side uh, to Morrow. He threw it in over the goal line to Bobby Nystrom. Nystrom bumped off the play by Buzniak, trying to force a draw behind the net to Tonelli in front. Now Dennis yes! scores! He yes! scores! Dennis Potvin scores the overtime goal, and the Islanders win it 4-3 to three in overtime. The Flyers came back to win game two and even the series at a game apiece. So now it was back home to the island for the next two games. In game three, the Islanders blew it open early. Lorne Henning started it with a shorthanded goal. Then three power play goals made it four to nothing after one period. The Flyers come back out of the zone again. Leach has the puck at the red line. Throws it over in the left wing for Brian Propp. Knocked off his stick nicely by Bobby Bourne. Ahead to Henning. Comes in with a drive. Yeah! Yes! Lauren Henning, a short-handed goal, and the Islanders lead it one to nothing. Dennis comes to the blue line, top of the spot, right down the middle. Shot, save, rebound, yes! score! Dennis Potvin took the shot in the slot, got his own rebound, and knocked it in, and the Islanders lead it two to nothing. 
Islanders control the draw. draw. Dennis, right point, top of the front to Posse. In front, the shot by Gillies, yeah. the score. Beautiful touch. I think, deflected it in front to Gillies, and Gillies knocked it home. Dennis, stick handling there. Now looking for a way in, sends Gillies in on the left wing. Punk hopped over his stick. He dropped it for Bossy. Bossy right in front with a drive. Score! Yes! Mike Bossy with a power play goal from the right in the slot, and the Islanders lead it four to nothing. The Islanders were sizzling on the power play. In the second period, they connected for two more to make it a six to nothing game. Islanders leading it four to nothing, going out to take the draw in the flyer zone to the right of uh, Mir. Bobby Clark's there. He wins the draw from going in over the goal line to Barber. He goes behind the net for McElhargy. Bumped off the play by Bourne, but Barber grabs the puck out to the center ice. The pass comes from Clark, but Pearson knocked that down. Now Gillies comes back in with a drive. Score! Clark Gillies from the left point drive went right by Mir. Glove hand, and the Islanders lead it five to nothing. Islanders have scored on their four previous power play chances, this being their fifth of the game. They also have a shorthand of the goal scored by Lauren Henning, the first of the game. Trache out with Bossy as the forwards, Pearson and Dennis on the back line. Flyers, three skaters are Bobby Clark, Daly, and DuPont. Islanders control the draw. Dennis in the slot shot, score! Dennis with a wrist shot, went up over Mears, left shoulder. Another power play goal. Islanders lead it six to nothing. The final score was six to two, and the Islanders were back up by a game. Two nights later, they would be up by two games when they again beat the Flyers 5-2. The Islanders were leading 2-1 to one after two periods, but it should have been more. Philadelphia goalie Pete Peters was having a spectacular night in goal. Finally, at 6.06 of the third period, Brian Trache put one by him. Howard lugs it out over the blue line, veers to the right side, comes in over the flyer blue line on the off wing, drop pass in the right face-off circle, Trache shoots, he scores! Brian Trache, with the assist from Gary Howard, has put the Islanders in front, 3-1. to one. But the Flyers bounce back to make it a one-goal game again when Ken Linsman scored at 11.53. But in a span of a minute and a half on goals by Bob Nystrom and Clark Gillies, the Islanders scored twice and clipped the Flyers' wings. One more victory and the Stanley Cup would reside on Long Island. But that victory didn't come in Game 5 as the Flyers clawed back into the series with a 6-3 win on Spectrum Ice. So now it was back to the island and Stanley Cup history. The game started in Philly's favor, but it was a long way from being over. Here's Tonelli in over the blue line at the left point, tries to go around. Wilson comes in front, a centering pass. Loose in front, shot by Bossy, save, rebound, score! Dennis Putman got the rebound and the Islanders have tied it up on the power play goal. The Flyers gone berserk complaining on the goal, but it will stand. Here's Gillies down the left wing, bumps in over the blue line, his return pass to going, centering pass, center shot, score! Wayne Sutter put one up over the left side of Pete Peters, and the Islanders lead 2-1. to one. Prop feeds the right side to Holmgren, in over the blue line is Linsman with the pass, he's knocked down, Lane can't control the puck, Holmgren has, backhand, centering pass, shot, score! Brian Prop has tied it up with a minute two to go in the first period. Pearson down along the right wing boards behind the net to Trache. Out of the slot to Bourne, the drive. He fanned on it. Bossy shot. Oh! Yes! Bourne fanned on the shot. Bossy got the loose puck and knocked it home, and the Islanders lead it 3 to 2. A right side lead for Tonelli to come in over the blue line at the right point. Busts around Bobby Clark to the goal line. Looking to center. He does. Nystrom. Yes! Yes! Oh, yes! Oh, Tonelli yes! threw it in front to Nystrom, and he knocked it home, and the Islanders lead it 4 to 2. In the third period, the Flyers battling for their lives even things up, and this one was headed for overtime. In playoff games, the Islanders had won six out of seven overtime games. They had us right where we wanted them. Flyers win the draw, clear the zone, but Blondman gets it back at his own blue line. Right side to Pearson. Up ice to Henning. He deflected it into the zone. Fly Islanders racing after the puck. Nystrom interfered with, but no penalty call. Nystrom collides with Daly behind the flyer net. Puck is loose there, cleared over the boards, uh, but not, and comes out to center ice. Pearson stops it there for Henning. Henning comes back to his own blue line and shoots it up ice for Tonelli. Tonelli comes in over the blue line on the off wing. Comes in front of the shot to Nystrom. Yes! 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 The Islanders win the Stanley Cup! The Stanley Cup! The Islanders win the Stanley Cup! On the overtime goal by Bobby Nystrom! Islanders win the Stanley Cup! Bobby Nystrom with a goal from John Tonelli! And the Islanders have won the Stanley Cup! What a finish! What a finish to a hockey season! The Islanders have taken 
seven years, 352 days, 17 hours, and 33 minutes, but they have finally won the Stanley Cup on the sudden up overtime goal, scored by Bobby Nystrom at 7-11. The Islanders on the ice, hugging each other, with Al Arbor out there hugging every one of his players. The Islanders have won the Stanley Cup. What a glorious way it was to win the Stanley Cup. It was fantastic. The Islanders had overcome a troubled regular season and finished on top. The Islanders are the champions. Lord Stanley has moved to Long Island. This time, the chemistry was just right.